Welcome to Chaotic Crochet Chatter from Stitchcraft Gifts. My name's Jenny and I crochet for a living. I live in North Yorkshire in the UK with my husband Kelvin, son Ned and our cat Neris. In this podcast I share current projects with you, talk about what's going on in my life and generally witter on about nonsense. I hope you enjoy watching. If you do, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends. Thank you and take care. Hello, it is Wednesday, I've just checked the date and I can't remember it, I think it's the 15th of November, could be, and it's coming up to half past nine in the morning. This is my 10th episode, that feels like a milestone, I probably ought to have done something special to mark it and I completely forgot, <laughs> but never mind, it is the 10th episode of Chaotic Crochet Chatter, which, I don't know, it both feels like I've been doing this for ages and like it's still completely brand new, it's still a bit weird. Um, yeah, if you've watched all ten, well, nine and then this one, thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't, then they're all on here, I think bar one that I had some serious technical difficulties with. Um, so yeah, feel free to go back and, and watch the earlier ones, you haven't missed much. <laughs> um, I am wearing my crochet jumper, I finally remembered to put it on, it's gonna have to come off in a minute because it's actually quite warm in here and I'm getting really really warm. Um, I thought I'd put it on to show you, um, let me stand up if I can without knocking everything over so you can see the rest of it, the jumper I'm really really proud of. Uh, I do wish I'd made this band just a little bit lower, just a row or two, uh, but other than that it's lovely. <laughs> I might add some pockets at some point, because you can never have too many pockets. <laughs> um, it does not at all go with this top, by the way, so just ignore that. <laughs> uh, I made the decision at the time to not really do a collar on it, and I'm kind of regretting that now, so I might add one at some point. I haven't decided yet, we will see. Um, oh, what's the pattern? I wrote it down. It is... I made it using the Whispering Pines pattern by Knits and Knots, so I will link that below for you. Uh, and the yarn is Drops Big Merino. I can't remember the colour names now, but I'll look them up and I will put them in the description along with everything else that I mentioned today. Uh, but yeah, I just thought, yay, crochet jumper, <laughs> finally remembered to wear it. Uh, I am now going to take it off because I'm really, really warm, so bear with me a moment. Okay, there we go, that is better. Um, I probably shouldn't complain about being warm because it has been really cold <laughs> actually here. Um, and that's expected really, it's the middle of November now. So, and I don't mind the cold weather. I think you've probably gathered that by now, anyone who's been here before. Uh, yeah, our house is weird though. Downstairs is really cold. Um, the sitting room in particular, it's just freezing. <laughs> so I'm trying to spend a lot of time upstairs at the moment because it is nice and warm up here. And uh, I'm babbling now about heat and cold. I'll stop doing that. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I have to be honest, I'm not feeling great today. Um, I think we've all got just a bit of a cold, nothing serious, but just feeling a bit run down. So my sinuses are doing my head in again. I need to chase the hospital up actually, because I've not heard anything about my operation yet. Um, and then as well as that, I'm just absolutely shattered. I've got a lot of concealer on <laughs> today. <laughs> um, yeah, Ned didn't sleep very well last night, so I was up and down, which is fine, obviously, you know, if he needs me, he needs me, and I'm not, not gonna begrudge him that at all, but, oh, I'm shattered, <laughs> absolutely shattered. <sighs> but anyway, you're not here to listen to me whinge about feeling rubbish, so I'll try not to. <laughs> you are here, I assume, at least, 
to hear about what I've been up to for the past couple of weeks, uh, both in crochet land and outside of crochet land. <laughs> so let's crack on, I guess, and I will tell you what's what. Um, I do, oh, I just wanted to say, actually, that, sorry, just rearranging my notes. Um, I don't know if it's going to stick. I'm still playing around with the format of this, but for this week at least, I'm going back to a slightly more structured format. So I'll do a bit of a life update and then finish projects, works in progress. There's a little bit of incoming, not a lot today, for once. <laughs> uh, and then what's coming up. And then at the end I'll do my little update on my uh, physical health and weight loss journey for those who want to know. Um, and then that'll be, that'll be it. That's the cat meowing, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> she may well come in and see us in a minute. I've deliberately left the door so she can because she'd just sit outside and shout if she couldn't come in. Uh, I am also, hello, are you come in? Come in to say hi. Uh, I'm also not wearing my glasses again this week, they're just doing my head in today, <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to wear them, but that does mean that I'm going to have to get on my notes like this to be able to read them. <laughs> um, for anyone who's not been here before, I am partially sighted, visually impaired, whatever you want to call it, everyone seems to call it something different. She's not showing her face, is she? She can't quite get up to the camera. Say hello. No, she doesn't like being picked up. You've got wet paws. You've been outside. Yeah, I'm gonna get me all mucky. There we go. Um, yeah, which I'm not gonna go into too much, but just an FYI for you. Uh, so, life update. What's been going on? It has not been the most eventful fortnight. Um, but there's a few little bits that are worth mentioning. So I've forgotten all of them now, so I'm going to have to check. Because <laughs> I'm incredibly scatterbrained at the moment. Uh, so last time I spoke to you, I think I was just about to go to my friend Lindsay's house for the evening. Um, not on the day I recorded, but a couple of days later. And I did, and that was lovely, as always. Uh, we always have a good, really good chat, really good time get very very drunk. I was hammered when I got home. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't think there's anything significant about that to mention other than that it was a really good night. And then that weekend was bonfire night, or Guy Fawkes night, I suppose. I'm assuming, because of the history of that, that it is just a UK thing. Um, I mean, if you do anything similar, if you're watching from somewhere outside of the UK and you do anything similar, let me know. Um, basically, the 5th of November marks the anniversary of, I'm going to have to get this right now, um, rubbish at history, <laughs> the anniversary of the attempt to blow up the Houses of Parliament by not just a man called Guy Fawkes, but a bunch of people, but he's the main, the one that people mostly remember. And it seems like an odd thing to <laughs> celebrate, but we're British, we're odd. <laughs> so we do, on or around the 5th, we'll, there'll be sort of various public places. There's like a big bonfire and we do fireworks and it's just a nice excuse to get out and do something fun, really, these days. Um, the main public event near where we live was on the Saturday night, which was the 4th, just because Sunday's a bit of an awkward day for people, um, as they tend to do it on the nearest Saturday to the 5th. And we went to my dad's for tea, because he lives right next to where they do the fireworks, which is very convenient. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so we went to his for tea and then went out and watched the fireworks, which were, as always, spectacular. Ned was loving it. 
and uh, then we went home again. So it's not, you know, it's not a huge thing. It's not like we're out all night or anything, but it's a nice little event. Everyone always seems to have a good time. And uh, yeah, that was good fun. Um, I'm just going to grab a drink of my trusty honey and lemon because you can probably hear my throat's going already. Um, so I might cut this out this bit. <laughs> I might not because I'm still talking. Yes, I shall have a quick sip and carry on in a way. Mm, this cup, instantly, one of my sisters bought me. Was it last Christmas, I think? And we've got a matching cat bowl <laughs> for Harris. Because <laughs> I am the crazy cat lady. Even though I have a husband and a child, I am still the crazy cat lady. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's one of my favourite mugs. I use it all the time. Partly because it can go in the dishwasher, unlike some of my other ones. Um, but it's just a really good size and shape, so I use it a lot. Uh, what else has been happening? Ned had... Um, he was off school for the week last time we spoke, because it was half term, so he's been back this week. Hallelujah! <laughs> means I'm back to my normal routine, feeling a bit more organised. Um, he's been fine, as far as I know. He says he's had a good week so far. All the days seem to be going okay. <laughs> Uh, and then, is it yesterday? No, it was Monday. It was Monday. Uh, we, he and I, had to go to the hospital in the morning just for a routine appointment. Um, he is having his second set of grommets fitted in his ears in about three weeks' time. So we went for the pre-op assessment, which is not a problem at all, basically. You, talk to them about what's going on, they tell you um, how it all works, most of which we know already because he's had it done before. Um, that's my phone, sorry, I forgot to put it on silent, I will do that now, <laughs> otherwise it's going to keep beeping at us. Uh, what was I saying? Yes, the pre-op assessment, he was an absolute superstar for that. Um, quite shy and quiet, but he did have a little chat to the... Uh, play therapist and the nurses um in fact by the end of the bit with the nurse which was the sort of latter half of the appointment he was chattering away and being an absolute loony like he normally is so he obviously felt quite comfortable uh which is good because both the play therapist and the nurse that we saw on monday should be there on the day of the operation so there'll be a couple of familiar faces for him um <laughs> play therapist thing is great they always have a uh, a teddy they're the one who kind of really explains what's going to happen and like about the anaesthetic and everything still be under a general anaesthetic I'm talking really fast aren't I I'll try and slow down um, I've just realized I'm not tested the sound this morning I normally do before I start so I hope this is recording okay in fact I might stop it in a minute and just check otherwise I'll be very annoyed later. Um, yeah, but they have a teddy and they have um, a cannula that you can see so the kids can put the teddy to sleep with the sleepy medicine and they also have a mask that they can look at you know, in case they need oxygen or anything. Um, so Ned was the anaesthetist and put the teddy to sleep and then he was the surgeon and fixed Teddy's ears and it, well, it was lovely. Uh, but yeah, that was Monday. Um, I am just going to stop this and check the sound. I'll start again in a minute because, yeah, if the sound hasn't recorded I'll be furious later on, so bear with. Okay, it's working. <laughs> Hopefully it will carry on working. I now need to remember that I've got two video clips to add in when I edit this later. <laughs> Normally there's just one. Uh, but that's the problem for later on. Uh, where was I? Yeah, that was the hospital visit, visit on Monday. I don't know what is going on with my hair today, by the way. It's both brilliant and ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, what else did we do? Oh, yeah. Two things. Um, one of them is not a big deal, just something to mention. It was, of course, uh, Remembrance Sunday. Weekend just gone. Uh, otherwise known as Armistice Day, 
I think, again, I'm terrible at remembering significant events and what they're called. Um, obviously, I know this is not just in the UK. I think it's uh, marked also in the US and probably other countries. I don't really know. Canada. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing now. I'll stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just to... Um, pay our respects to and spend a bit of time thinking about all the service people from the various armed forces who have put their lives you know in the service of their countries over the past many many years um, and that is I don't have a really strong connection with the military but the generation I'm of you know there are people in my family, none of whom I think are alive anymore, unfortunately, but that you know, there are people who uh, served in, contributed to the efforts of uh, World War II in particular. I'm not even going to go back and, and you yeah, know, there will have been people in, in World War One as well. Um, also, Kelvin's dad served in the military so we've got a connection there it's i think it's more important to kelvin on a personal level than it is for me um yeah i mean it's important to me i do obviously i always acknowledge the day but for kelvin it's there's that personal connection that's a bit stronger uh so we didn't really do anything to mark that but it's worth mentioning still um you know, we observed the minute silence and all of that. Uh, and now to just go off on a complete and utter different direction. Um, the other thing to mention from the past couple of weeks uh, is we had a bit of a health scare with Neris. She's absolutely fine now, but I was at panic stations for a couple of days. <laughs> um, Basically, we discovered that she had a lump. Um, when was that? Would it have been last week? I think it must have been last week. Uh, just sort of below her shoulder blade. Um, and so we rang up and they were really good. They got us, you know, the vet got us straight in that day, that afternoon. And she wasn't happy about going. She never is. <laughs> but she behaved herself and then gave her a good check. And the theory at the moment, which seems to be holding true, is that it is just a reaction to the annual immunisation booster that she had, oh, maybe a week and a half before I noticed the bump. So it's a bit weird that it's taken a while to show, but they don't seem worried. And she is absolutely fine in herself. And... As they said it probably would, it does seem to be reducing now, the lump seems to be getting smaller. It's not paining her at all, as far as we can tell. Um, you know, she seems quite happy for me to <laughs> feel around it and poke it a bit to see what's going on. Um, obviously if it starts getting worse again we'll go back. <laughs> and they have said that if it's still there by Christmas, to go back anyway, just to make sure. But yeah, it was a scary day or two for me. I had a bit of a panic attack about it. Um, but she's fine. She's fine. And that's that. That's the life update. That took longer than I thought it would. <laughs> I'm just checking the time. Um, but then I suppose I did stop and start a couple of times. So that's not so bad. So I will move on to my finished projects. I have got just three to show you. Uh, which one shall I start with? I'll start with this because it's probably the quickest one. I, so as you all know, my favourite crochet designer is Sixel Design, who has Alexis. Uh, she is in the US and her speciality is mosaic crochet and her patterns are stunning. Um, she is currently re-working, <laughs> nearly getting barrel, 
some of her older patterns and I was lucky enough to be selected as a tester for the one she's well she's just re-released it but she was testing obviously last week um, and I've only done a little swatch because she didn't need us to do the whole full pattern although I should have done a bit more than I did but she says it's okay <laughs> I have to actually think properly next time and read the instructions properly um, but yeah this is her dragon scales pattern which size better that size probably better isn't it there's a bit more space um, and I'm really really pleased with how it's come out I'm gonna have to do something with this I think I'm gonna make a little um, a little zippy pouch. Hang on, just dropping everything. Yeah, I love the colours. This is made using a uh, Stylecraft Special DK. I think it's DK. Um, in French Navy, the, um, the bits in between scales. And then the scales themselves are in Hobby Metallico in silver sapphire i think i'll check that i'll put it all in the description obviously um it was really fun to do it's a really simple pattern actually there's a couple of special stitches in it but because it's got quite a short repeat you pick it up really quickly and yeah i think i'm going to turn it into a little zippy pouch i might do maybe reverse the colors for the other side so the scales are dark and the in between is light i don't know um, but yeah, I felt really, really pleased to be a part of the testing process. Um, I'm on her list and hopefully we'll do some more in the future for her. Because I do love her patterns. I own most of them now. <laughs> I think I've bought most of them. Um, and yeah, she's re-released that. I think the original chart, um, I think the original chart was where it's in the other direction. Possibly. So she's reworked it, so it is now worked from the bottom up, as you'd expect. Um, either way, both versions are fine. <laughs> you know, work it however you want to. Oh, what else was I going to say? Mm, about the yarn, actually. Stylecraft Special is, is one I've, I use a lot of. Is one I use a lot of the time. There we go. I think it was the first... Yeah, it was the first yarn I ever used, actually, was Stylecraft. A special DK in various colours. This is Hobby Metallico. I've had this in moustache for ages, and I've got a bunch of other colours as well. It's the first time I've actually used it. I've been looking for something to do with it. And it is just gorgeous. You see how the light reflects on that. And this colour's particularly good, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I've got there's a whole range of colours. I don't know how much they've still got now. But the last time I checked, there was still some available. I don't know if they're going to continue making it. But if you can, go and grab some. It is really lovely to work with. Um, it's got a little bit of a fluff to it. But not excessively. It's really smooth, it's really soft. Uh, I think, I haven't got the label, but I think it, well, I have, but I haven't got it handy. Um, I think it's 100%, no, it's not 100% acrylic. It's acrylic and something else. <laughs> um, oh dear, I need to get my head into gear. I've just lost my train of thought again. Uh, but yeah, it's just really soft, really lovely, um, quite squishy which makes the texture of this really lovely because you've got a bit of a contrast between the two between the two yarns um and yeah now i just need to figure out what i'm going to do with the rest of the colors i've got because <laughs> uh, i'm not sure what i'm going to use them for as is the case for most of the yarn in my stash i've got far too much which won't surprise you at all if you've been here before <laughs> so that's that um, I am sorry if I sound a bit all over the place and a bit disjointed. My head is not really clear. I'm not really with it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm just tired. Um, 
which I said I wouldn't moan about so I will stop. Uh, so next finished project. This is both a finished project and a work in progress because this one is finished and then I've got a bunch more that aren't. I have been making snowflakes. How well can you see that? Because it's white and everything else is white. You hold it here. <laughs> yeah, hold it against myself. Look, and you might be able to see it a bit better. Mm -hmm. I have been making snowflakes as Christmas decorations. Um, these will be going in my shop and they'll also be available at the events that are coming up over the next few weeks which I'll um, I'll give you all the dates for at the end well later on anyway um, and yeah this one hasn't turned out exactly how it was supposed to <laughs> because attaching it to the hoop um, the hoop wasn't quite big enough for it so I've had to kind of well I've had to wing it a bit basically <laughs> um, but I do like it. I like how it's turned out. I think it's quite pretty. Uh, this, uh, I've made all the snowflakes. Come on, Johnny, get it together. I've made all the snowflakes using, what is it, Payton's, ooh, what's it called? What's it called? There we go, that's upside down. <laughs> Payton's Essentials Crochet. I hope that focuses for you. Might not do. Um, and this is just in white. I do have it in other colours, but obviously for snowflakes, white makes the most sense. Um, a very small hook. I can't remember which size now. It might have been a 1.8 mil, maybe. I'll have it written down somewhere, I'm sure. What else can I say? Oh, the hoops are just off Amazon. I'm not proud. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I've got a bunch more. I'll show you the work in progress ones in a minute. Um, they're all mostly finished, I just haven't attached them to the hoops yet. Um, actually, I'll do that now. There's no point waiting, is there? And while I'm talking about snowflakes, I'll show you the other ones too. I think I've got is it nine altogether, I think. Oh, and these have been blocked, because otherwise they are a right best until you block them. Um, I have... other side. What am I saying? I have uh, spray blocked them, so just stretching them out, spraying them with water, uh, and then I've sprayed them with uh, spray starch as well, just to stiffen them a bit so they do actually keep their shape, because otherwise they're just wobbly and a mess and they don't really look like anything. Uh, and then yes, they will all be attached to hoops. They are each, I think, bar two of them from a different different patterns. They're all free patterns and I will link them all below for you so you can have a look and make your own. Um, varying levels of difficulty. Some have got some, uh, I'm trying to think what the most complicated stitch is, it's probably the Pico stitches which I hate doing <laughs> but if you get them right they do look good. Is <laughs> uh, that one? I do, I do love all of these, they're really pretty now that they've been blocked. That one hasn't got any picots, that's all... Is it doubles? US terms. It's pretty much all double crochets, that one. And chains, obviously, to make spaces. So that one's quite simple. Oh, and this one is dinky. I love it. It's a really tiny little one. I've gone the wrong way again. There we go. You're really, really cute. Wrong way. Come on. <laughs> really tiny one um, and then oh this one is a little bit wonky but once I attach it to the hoop I'm sure it'll be fine this is the one I think they've all ended up looking really good there was one that I made that I started blocking it and just thought no this isn't looking how I want it to <laughs> so I've popped that into my scrap yarn collection and at some point I will undo it or chop it up and use it either in a scrap project or as um, as filling for an amigurumi or something like that. But yeah, those were my snowflakes. I just need to, like I said, just need to attach those ones to the hoops and then they'll be ready. I want to get them 
I want to get them ready for Monday, just the first of the three events I've got coming up. Uh, hopefully they'll be quite popular and like I said I will put them in my shop as well. <clears throat> so that's that. And then the third finished object I've got for you are these. I love these. I'm going to pop them on to show you properly. These are a set of a pair. A set. A pair of fingerless gloves. Now I have been a bit... what's the word? Oh I don't know. As you will know if you've been following me on Instagram or you've seen my last couple of podcast episodes. Sorry they're quite snug. They fit really well but it just takes a minute to get them on. Um, I am taking part in the Strictly Sock Along this year which is run by Ali of uh, Little Drop of Wonderful on YouTube. Uh, she's on Instagram under Starry Eyes Ali and she does have another YouTube channel as well for her um, sort of daily life blogs that she does which are also really good. I would recommend those as well. Um, but Little Drop of Wonderful if you want to do um, if you want to know all about her crafting. Uh, yeah, and I thought you're always encouraged to cheat. Uh, again, I'll put a bit of info underneath for the sock along so you know what it's all about. Um, you are encouraged to cheat. And I have now made three pairs of actual socks, which you'll have seen on here and on Instagram. Um, and I thought, I like making socks. It's good, and I am... I'll show you in a minute. I have just started on another pair. But actually, I really need a new pair of fingerless gloves this year. Mostly for wearing indoors, to be honest, when I'm downstairs in the very cold sitting room, crocheting. And I thought, hang on. Gloves are just socks for your hands. <laughs> so this is my massive cheat for the Strictly Sock Along. This is what I am calling my toeless hand socks. <laughs> Otherwise known as fingerless gloves. Um, I have posted them on Instagram, I think, yes I have, and I have put a, um, oh dear, I'm sorry, I keep, <laughs> I'm all over the place today, aren't I? Um, I've done a, a project page on Ravelry for them as well, so you can get all the information there, and they're just really lovely. To be honest, they were a bit tricky, the bit for increasing for the thumb here and then the bit around the thumb. The pattern, I think again it's a free pattern so I'm not complaining too much and I got through it in the end but it just, it could be a little more clear. Um, otherwise it's a fantastic pattern. So you yeah, know I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain, I'm certainly not gonna say don't use it because it is beautiful. I love the um, the shell stitching. It looks really really lovely. Um, but yeah just just do bear in mind that you need to concentrate <laughs> when you're increasing for the thumb and maybe just read it through a couple of times. Uh, but yeah I'm really, I'm really proud of these. I've worn them a few times already and they're really warm. Uh, the yarn is, as is almost exclusively the case for my uh, sock projects at the moment, is uh, my Vicky Brown's yarn from the Mini Skiing Club. This is the uh, the yarn from February this year, 2023. Uh, and yeah, I love the colour. It's nice and warm without being too warm. Um, I left the last couple of rows off the pattern just so it didn't completely cover my palms because when I'm crocheting I, need, I like to be able to feel what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, they fit beautifully, which must be a fluke because everyone's got different sized hands and arms. Uh, so I don't know how that's happened, but I'm not complaining. Uh, I'm going to take those off again because, again, it is a little bit warm. Um, but yeah, I think because of the stitch, they have got a bit of stretch both ways. Got a lot of stretch that way, actually. So that's why I'm so careful putting them on because I don't want to overstretch them um, or rip them. That would be a disaster. 
yeah they've turned out really really well really happy right I'm gonna take a moment to gather my thoughts a little bit have another drink and I will carry on in a minute right works in progress so I've already shown you the uh, unfinished snowflakes so I don't need to do that what else have I got it's all down here to the side I'm trying not to run it over uh, so the other Christmas decoration type thing that I've been making uh, is a collection of mini stockings designed for hanging on the tree oh, how cool is this back by the way again you'll have seen it before if you've been here before or on Instagram this is my bag from Jeanette at Crafty Clags 103 that I bought from her it's gorgeous and it's perfect for small projects like this it's stuffed a little full at the moment um, oh let me just show you actually I bought loads of really shiny yarn look at that and then I've got some I'm not going to show you all of it but I've got these ones and I've got oh some super shiny super fine thread as well because I'm all about the shine and the glitter I was going to say at this time of year most of the time but especially <laughs> this time of year everything is glittery Kelvin gets a bit annoyed because I end up getting glitter all over the house um, those are I can't remember what they're called I will link them down below though for the shiny shiny arms I'll show you that one as well look they're really cool but uh, yes anyway I've been making mini stockings I am currently working through a set well no that's not true I'm making a lot of them and then Tabby my sister-in-law has requested 10 for herself um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make as many as I can and then let her choose which one she wants and then the rest will go with me to the uh, to the event that I mentioned and that I'll tell you about later um, I'm hoping again these will be quite popular because they're really cute <laughs> they're really really cute and um, they're simple to make they do take a bit of time but they're not difficult at all um, it's just if you can count if you can do a single crochet and an increase you're fine uh, so I've got them in they're all pretty much red and white or green and white at the moment all apart from one which is shy but they are I've got a few other colours I'm going to try with so that's and how cute are they they're just lovely aren't they um, Ned asked me the other day if I was making baby socks <laughs> I was like no not at the moment I might do because uh, as you will know again if you've been here before oh this one's sparkly look my sister's expecting a baby in January I should have a little niece um, by the end of January which will be lovely and so I may well may well end up making some baby socks but these are not these are tree decorations uh, there we go that's another sparkly one these are oh the yarns are all over the shop but the green is a hobby rainbow cotton I think one of their sparkly ones as is this sparkly white uh, the red I think is drops muscat I might be wrong <laughs> and then the toes and the heels on this one are some of that shiny yarn I just showed you um, I will I will put in the notes all the different yarns I've used so far uh, just so you can get those colours if you want them uh, so how many is that? that's six I've got another one that I'm halfway through and I want to get not including that one another seven minimum done by the end of Sunday Eek. <laughs> I've got a lot on at the moment and it's entirely my own fault I keep taking on new projects and uh, then I've got these three events that I'm desperately frantically making stuff for um, woke up with really sore hands this morning <laughs> so I need to be a bit careful um, but hey it's fine I will get everything done that needs to it's all good but those are the mini stockings again it's a free is it free it is a free pattern 
um, which again I will link for you uh, in the description so you can have a look and use it if you like and it's really well written actually um, because it's got six variations and the designer has fully written out all six for you so there's a plain one plain with a contrast top plain with contrast toe and heel the other one's the stripy one and then it might just be contrast heel and contrast toe I can't remember but if you have a look you'll see them um, and because it's been written out like that it's really easy to do your own variations as well you can just change where you change colour which colours you use um, so yeah um, come on brain and gear <laughs> so yeah like I said a little bit time consuming but really simple is uh, I've been making them kind of while I'm waiting for other things to, to happen you know I made one while I was waiting for tea to cook the other night um, and just whenever I've got a spare moment really in the, in the minute that's that's my main focus uh, what else have I got to show you oh there's one that I'm not showing you talking of baby stuff uh, I am have almost finished I am making a hat for my impending niece <laughs> um, as I've said previously oh that's why I didn't bring up what I haven't written down I've mentioned before the baby blanket that I'm making from one of the crochet society boxes which I am sharing on here and on Instagram everything else I'm making for the baby I'm not going to post publicly until after she is here because I want them to be a surprise for my sister um, but yes I have almost finished making a hat I just need to do a, uh, a pom-pom for it so I will get that finished this week because there is no excuse not to <laughs> absolutely no excuse uh, right this is a big work in progress this one I am doing some more testing this testing is for Anna Maria of the Crochet Highway I think again I'll check <laughs> I'll check and I'll put all the information in for you uh, and this is is it the Sagittarius sweater yes I think so I think it's the Sagittarius um, she's got a uh, sort of series of patterns that's all zodiac themed um, and they're all gorgeous every single one of them um, I can't remember if she's done Capricorn already which is my star sign um, if not I can't wait to see what she does for that because all of them have been lovely no this isn't Sagittarius this is Aquarius of course it is just looking at the swatch that I've got in my hand <laughs> it's Aquarius you'll see why I've been reminded of that in a sec because designed to look like waves uh, what can I say about this I can't say a huge amount because obviously the pattern hasn't been released yet it is very much in the testing stage uh, there's quite a big group of us testing it and we've got until is it the 10th of January something like that so it's going to take a while especially because I have ended up using fingering weight yarn now the good part of that <laughs> is that it's going to be lovely and lightweight and hopefully quite drapey look at that there's a good drape in there <laughs> just kind of flops which is what we want um it should be quite cool to wear so I may even be able to wear it in summer depending on whether we get another heat wave uh, the downside of that is that it's going to take me flipping ages <laughs> this is not going to work up quickly and I'm going to try and get a bit done over the next couple of weeks but like I said I've got a lot of projects on the go at the moment so it might have to wait until December which will then only really give me five maybe six weeks to get it done during what is actually quite a busy month <laughs> Uh, so it's a tall order but I will do it I have made a commitment 
and I will get it done. So that is the little swatch that I've made. <clears throat> gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Pop that away and I will show you the yarn itself. Because I have got, I'm using for the red, what's the colourway called? Oh, I can't remember. And I've not got it written down on here, which is unusual. But again, it's in all my notes, so I shall put it in the description for you. Um, this is uh, Scapia's Cotton 8 in a lovely deep red, which, as you may already know, is my favourite colour. And I think it suits me quite well, which is always a bonus. So that's that. And I've got six skeins of that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, which should be enough. I hope it's enough. And then I've got two of these gorgeous, gorgeous cakes, which is from Hobby, again, which is Cotton King's Sultan Delu Deluxe, I can never say that, I don't know why, Sultan Deluxe Shine Gradient Cake. I'm working from the middle, because Hobby are sensible people, <laughs> and make it so that their cakes are always scentable, which is fab. It'll get darker and darker and darker, and then when I join in the next one, I'll go from the outside. And so I'll go dark back to light. Um, horizontal stripes might not suit me very well. I don't know. But I think I'm going to have fun making this. The pattern is, um, once you get the hang of it, it's actually a really nice pattern to work. It's quite rhythmic. And then that's for the main body of the sweater and then the sleeves are um, a different but complementary pattern using the same yarns. Uh, so hopefully it's going to be fun, hopefully it'll go well. Um, all the other testers pretty much, you know, bar one or two, have actually started the proper sweater already which makes me feel a bit bad because I am running behind but also means I benefit from the fact that they've already found where there are moments of confusion, shall we say. <laughs> and so I've seen the discussions they've had in the group chat with Anna Maria and you know they've put notes on the pattern, you know it's all in a Google Drive shared folder so I can see all the notes. So hopefully by the time I do start <laughs> it'll be quite easy <laughs> and it'll just be a case of checking that what everyone said makes sense. Uh, what else am I going to mention? Mm. You will have seen this before, if you've been here before, and there's not a lot to show you so this will be quick, but my Christmas jumper that I am making, oh and I've just unravelled half of that skein of yarn but never mind, um, this is the Festive Furs sweater by Manatee Squares. I am using... What am I using? What am I using? Where's the yarn label? Hello, yarn label! They're in here somewhere. I am using... This yarn. Well, that's not helpful. Oh, that's okay, you can still see the name. <laughs> Just ripped the label, but the critical information is there. Yarnsmiths Create Aran in, what was it called it? Claret Red. Quite similar to that other colour you saw a minute ago. Um, but a very different yarn. Very different yarn to work with. Um, again, really nice actually, it's really soft. It's 100% acrylic, really soft. The front panel I showed you last time is already complete. This is the back panel, which I think, I can't remember how many repeats I need now, but I think I've only got two, maybe three more repeats to go, and it's working up pretty quickly. Uh, again, um, once you get the hang of the pattern, because it repeats, it sticks in my head, which uh, means that I can, at the moment, until I finish the repeats I'm on, <laughs> I can just pick it up 
do a bit, put it down. I don't need to think too much about it. So again, hello Neris again. Um, she's just down here. <laughs> uh, again, I've been working on that. You know, when I've got a spare half hour, or if I'm waiting for tea to cook, whatever I did a little bit last night, um, just before bed, because I wanted to do something, but I was absolutely exhausted and couldn't really, <laughs> couldn't face the thought of having to read a pattern. <laughs> so I just picked up that and did three, four, maybe five rows. Just finished off that that repeat at the top. Um, so yeah, my goal originally for that was to finish it by the end of November because then I can wear it for all of December, obviously in between washes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to meet that, but as I said, it is working out quite quickly. I need to finish that back panel, do the sleeves, and then it's just, just joining it together and doing, um, I think the ripping for the sleeves is kind of, you work it at the same time as the sleeves, if that makes sense. That is the case with the front and back panel. Um, and then I'll just need to do some neck ribbing to finish it off. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that won't take too much longer. It'll definitely be ready by Christmas, which is the important thing. Um, and then I can plan next year's Christmas jump. <laughs> Figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I just want to show you this bag again, actually. This is not officially a project bag, but it is now. Um, this is the tote bag that I bought last time we went to the Yorkshire Wildlife Park when Ned and I fed the lemurs, which was my birthday present. It was either Christmas or birthday, they're really close together. Um, last year from Kelvin. So that bag is a lovely memento. Um, I use it all the time. It's such a good size for big projects, which is fab. Right, I believe, sorry, squeaky chair. I just have one more work in progress to show you and it won't take long because I haven't done very much. <laughs> uh, this is my most recent pair of, well I've done even less than I thought I had, of um, socks for the Strictly Sock Along. I am again using Vicky Brown's yarn. This is, this must be from the March. Okay, so you can see how it's working up. I have just done the toe so far for one sock. That's it all like that. I'll dig out one of the skeins actually so you can see that as well. Um, see what it's like before it's wound up, which is a process. <laughs> oh, before I throw it all over the floor. Um, what am I doing? That's the wrong bag, I think. Absolute chaos today. Absolute chaos. But then this is called Chaotic Crochet Tutor, so what do you expect? Uh, <laughs> so, here we go. That's the yarn before it gets that way. Um, before you wind it up. I love her skeins. 20 gram of fingering weight sock yarn. It's merino wool and nylon blend. I think it's uh, I think it's seventy five percent merino, twenty five percent nylon. I think really really gorgeous yarn to work with. I've said it before. I will keep saying it. <laughs> um, and uh, what was I going to say then? I've lost my train of thought again. Yeah, I use it a lot anyway, and it's really really lovely. Um, I am also using because this pattern. Oh my God, retrace my steps. The pattern I'm using for these is called the Vine Crochet Socks. I think it's another one by Brianna Kay, who one of my other pairs was by. Again, it'll be in the description. <laughs> and if that's wrong, then at least you'll have the correct information down there. Um, and so most of the sock is worked in one colour, but it's got a bit of colour work in these. So uh, sort of up the ankle, and I think onto the foot, possibly, but not round the back, just on the front. There's a lovely vine work, leafy pattern in colour work. So I'm using that, 
which I'll have to find the label for. Is it there? That might be it. No, that's a random bit of cardboard. cardboard. <sighs> oh no, I know where the label is. I know where the label is. It's here. It's here. There we go. This is... What's the colour? Drops Alpaca in dark green. Uh, just because I needed a plain colour for the colour work. And I don't know... How well they go together but there will at least be a bit of contrast and we'll be able to see the pattern which is the main the main concern um so yeah like i say i've only just started these um sticking to my self-imposed rule because i've got so many projects on at the moment of only working on strictly sock along socks while i'm watching strictly that does include the it takes two that is during the week but yeah it takes two the main show the results show and otherwise I'm not doing it because I'd never get anything else done I got a bit addicted to uh, making socks when I did my first couple of pairs and was just working on them all the time which meant they worked up really quickly which is good because I've been able to wear them but also meant I got absolutely nothing else done <laughs> and I can't afford to do that at the moment uh, so that is all of my works in progress so I'm gonna have another quick drink and then I shall show you the little bit of incoming that I've got and I will try and stop my chair from squeaking so much won't do it now that I'm doing it on purpose <laughs> right back in a moment oh that's gone cold <laughs> which is why I do honey and lemon actually instead of having a cup of tea and one of the reasons one is because it helps my throat so I can actually keep talking but also because if a cup of tea goes cold I am not going to drink it, it oh, cold tea is just wrong whereas cold honey and lemon is just a nice lemony drink yeah it's not a problem uh, right incoming it's just two things and they are both from Vicky Brown Oh, I've got her thing. There you go, that's her website. If that's focusing, I can't tell. <laughs> um, but again, I'll put down in the description for you. And I have got this, technically, is two bags. Just I've reused the bag for the other one, <laughs> for something else. Um, and this is two of her Lucky Dip mini skein bags. And you can choose between fingering weight or DK weight. Um, this is all her sock yarn mini skeins and you get a mixture of 10 and 20 grams. I'm not going to go through the whole bag because there's tons in here. I think I ordered two 150 gram bags. The reason I order them because obviously I get the monthly subscription mini skein club as well but I like using these um, for like toes and heels on socks because then I've got the the main colour for the month for the the main part of the sock and then I've, there's always something I can use as a contrast. See if I can see the colourway names for this. No, that one's from one of the monthly subscriptions so it doesn't have a name. That's a nice colour. In fact I think. Is that from February? It's very similar to the colour from February. What else have we got? have we got that oh that's another one another monthly one but yeah it is just such lovely yarn works up really nicely those were both 10 grams this one's a 20 and this is colorway oh we've not got all of the text on there so i can't tell you the colorway name for that one either i think that's really pretty one of the ones with little flex well yeah, I suppose they are flex, aren't they? Certainly when you work up the socks, you get little... They'd probably be a bit bigger if you were knitting, but in crochet you get little flex of colour all the way through. Which looks really lovely. I'll just do a couple more, see if I can find one with a colourway name on it that I can read. Oh, here we go. Except I don't know how to say that. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you that one either. That's another gorgeous colour. 
if it looks like I keep looking over there randomly it's because I'm looking at the screen so I can see that I've got the position right I can't tell whether it's focusing but I can at least tell whether I'm in the right general place on the screen which is helpful oh this one here we go last one I'll show you for now this one's called buttercup there we go it's always such lovely colours really um, really vibrant really like saturated is that the word and there's you know, there's a lot of colour which I really like um, one of the problems I have with my eyesight sorry that was really loud um, is that I am slowly going colour blind um, which is inconvenient <laughs> at best uh, but at least it's slow and steady it's not like happening overnight or anything um, and so I like things that are really saturated in colour because it means I can actually tell <laughs> at least vaguely what colour they are which is nice uh, and then the other thing the other bit of incoming to show you again won't take me long to show is oh something's fallen over I don't know what it was is oh no that one's coming open don't come open not supposed to be opening it yet especially because that one's number 23 <laughs> it's the Vicky Brown advent calendar this is one of two um, yarn related advent calendars I've got this year. I splashed out a bit. Oops. Um, this one I believe is just yarn, but that's okay. <laughs> I am not going to complain about that. Um, the other one I've got, which is the Crochet Society one for this year, they put other things in as well. Um, but it's nice yarn in the Crochet Society one. And it's acrylic which makes it a bit easier to care for but this yarn's nicer this is nicer um and you know she's a sole trader small business and all that so i want to support her and i love her yarn so it's a win-win for me um and she had it so that you were paying in installments for it instead of all at once which made it feel a bit less painful <laughs> um but yeah, I'm really looking forward to opening that. Uh, that is actually while I've got this up. Um, just a quick thing I was going to mention a bit later on. Well, not much later on, but in a minute, but I'll mention it now. There is going to be one more full length podcast episode at the end of this month. I believe I'll be recording on the 29th. And then I'm not going to do another full blog. blog another full podcast until January because I have decided to do Blogmas this year, first year. Um, Blogmas is basically um, where you, you do a little bit of recording if it's a video format or writing if it's a written format, whatever, every day. Um, whether or not you publish that every day is you know that varies from person to person I probably won't be because if I try to do that I'll get overwhelmed by all the editing and everything so I'm thinking I will probably I'll record every day and then I'll publish the videos every three four days so hopefully there'll be well there'll be at least one a week hopefully there'll be two a week for the whole of December excuse me um, so, as well as bits of crochet and things, um, I will be showing you things like opening my advent calendars every day, um, both this one and the Crochet Society one, so you'll be able to see what I've got, um, and then just little bits of daily life. So. You know, there'll probably be lots of shots of the cat. <laughs> uh, Ned might make it on a bit because he quite likes being involved in videos. I try not to put him on the internet too much just because you never know, do you? But he actively wants to be involved. So, you know, I feel bad saying no. <laughs> um, oh, excuse me, sorry. Nose. And... Um, 
again, Kelvin might be in the occasional video. You might not, I don't know. Uh, but yes, that's the plan. So there'll be one more full length podcast at the end of this month. And then it'll be Blogmas videos throughout December. And um, yes, yeah, so you'll get to see Christmas as we do it. Um, I will share presents and that. <laughs> I'm excited. Yay. Um, and then, yeah, I'll start again with the podcast episodes in January. Um, probably not on the first because I'll be tired. <laughs> And, but you never know, I might, if I'm organised then I'll do one on the first, if not it'll be that first week. So that is all of what has happened to my notes. Excuse me a moment. Am I going to have to wing it now? Oh no, there we go, I've got them in my hand. <laughs> got them in my hand. Um, so yeah, that is all the, <clears throat> excuse me all of the projects to show you. I've done all that. I've done my incoming. So it's kind of wrapping up now, slowly. Uh, what time are we on? Oh, it's not been an hour yet. It will be by the time I'm finished. Uh, so just a little bit about what is coming up in the next couple of weeks. The most exciting thing. I can't remember if I mentioned this last time. This Friday, so on the day that this is released into the world. I am going with my wonderful mother-in-law, who I genuinely get on with really well, she's gorgeous. We are going to the Knitting and Stitching Show here in Harrogate. Um, it will be my first big, I was going to say yarn show, it's not even just yarn, there's fabric and all sorts. Um, but yeah, the first big one that I've been to. And I can't remember which businesses are going to be there now but I know there's two or three that I recognise um, I think I've bought from I think Toft are going to be there um, who is it's a business you'll have heard of if you're in the crochet world or knitting world for that matter um, oh no are they just crochet either way you'll have heard of them um, they've got a good reputation very specific style of um, amigurumi little toys for those who don't know what amigurumi means um, which is probably most people uh yeah so i think they'll be there and um well lots of other lots of other businesses so i'm really looking forward to that i'm going to try not to buy too much because i don't have a lot of spare cash at the moment um i think what i'm going to what I'm saying to myself at the moment anyway is I'm only going to buy yarn if it is really special and I don't feel like I can get it somewhere else and I know what I use it for. That might go out of the window on the day <laughs> but what I'm gonna look for mostly is souvenir-y kind of things I suppose so um, I know that the knitting and stitching show organisers themselves do their own merchandise you can get like a tote bag and other things I don't know what so I'll probably get something from them just to mark the day and then you know if anyone's selling like fun stickers or um, postcards that I could stick up on the wall or coasters or really nice um, stitch markers or bag charms or anything like that then I will treat myself to a few bits and pieces. Um, mostly I'm going just to see what's out there, really, to see what one of these shows is like, because I've never been. Um, and, you know, I will pick up business cards and leaflets and so on. Um, I probably won't do much recording, because I want to be able to actually focus on being there. I might do the odd bit. Uh, if I do, then I will either do a separate video just for that, depending on how much I've got to show you, or I'll put it in in the next podcast. Um, and I will, of course, share with you anything I do buy as well. 
Uh, so yeah, that's this Friday and is really exciting. <laughs> um, and then I've got my three events, um, market events coming up. So uh, they're not all in the next two weeks. One of them is actually in December, but I'm going to mention it now so you've got the date. Um, I am at, on Monday, this coming Monday, which is the 20th, 20th of November, I will be at Starlings in Harrogate. Um, that is part of the, that's not helpful, hang on. There we go, that was almost catastrophic, I couldn't find the card with these notes on then. <laughs> but I've got it, I've got it back. Um, yes, that is part of the uh, Yorkshire Indie Business Club meeting for this month. Um, but it's not a standard meeting because it is the second birthday of the club which is just very cool in, of, in and of itself. Um, so it's going to be more of a social event. Um, you can get tickets from the Indie Business Club organiser Gemma, so I will of course link her in the description. Um, I think there's a couple more spaces for product based businesses um, to sell. I will have my own little table there and there are some more, how many are there? I don't know now. A few anyway. Um, I think there's at least another 10, there might be more than that, product based businesses that are local to Harrogate um, and sell wonderful things. All of them, I can't wait to see what they're going to bring with them. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good night, there's going to be some live music, we're all going to have a drink and a chat <laughs> and a great time. Um, I believe that you know, anyone's welcome, basically, to come and, and have a look around, but just check it out. Uh, have a look at, um, at Gemma's page and the information she's got about it. Uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> I'm flagging again. <laughs> and I've got the wrong one up. That's not... Yeah, there we go. That's the page I need. <laughs> uh, then on... Just move on, move on. Then on the 25th of November, which is the following Saturday, I will be at the Starbeck Christmas Fair at St Andrew's Church in Starbeck. I believe that's in the afternoon. Um, I think it's two till six in the afternoon, but I could be wrong. Hello, Neris. You come to say hello again. You coming up? You coming up? You can if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ow. She slipped and took her claws in. <laughs> there we go. She's going to wave her tail about for you and sniff my drink, of course. Of course. Uh, and then um, on the 3rd of December, there is a mini Christmas market at North Bar in Harrogate. Again, so if you're in the area, and you're free on any of those dates, please do come along. I will have snowflakes, my mini stockings, the Christmas baubles that I haven't shown you today, but you'll have seen them around and they'll be on Instagram at some point in the next few days, hopefully, um, that I make every year, and a few other bits and pieces as well. I'm focusing on those three. I want to keep it fairly simple, I think but I will take some other bits and pieces as well. I've got some, um, you know, <laughs> I've got some hats and um, sort of cowl, scarves, and a few bits like that. What else is coming up? What else is coming up? Nothing very much. Da, 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 da. I've mentioned Blogmas already. The only other thing that's coming up, which you won't care about at all, is that we've got um, a parents meeting at Ned's school which is just a routine thing it's for everybody. Uh, so we'll get to find out how he's getting on, what the teachers think of him this year. Uh, in the past he's always had glowing reports so <laughs> hopefully he will again. Uh, certainly we've not had anything negative come home yet so uh, we will see. <laughs> I think that's... I did write the date down but I've put the card away now. Um, next week I think. Uh, right, one, well no, a couple more things. So 
as I do every time, I'm just going to do a quick review of the goals I set myself last time and what I'm setting for myself this time. Um, these aren't hard and fast goals at all, I just like to have a bit of a plan so that I don't completely lose my way. <laughs> um, because otherwise I end up doing nothing useful at all and then I get upset with myself. Um, so yeah, every every couple of weeks, in line with the podcasts, I set myself just a few goals of things that I'd like to get done before the next one. So last time I said I would continue my Christmas jumper, which I have done. Okay, I've not done very much, but I have continued it, so that's a tick. I said I would start my Christmas decorations. Not only have I started them, I've done quite a lot, so I'm happy with myself on that one. I do have more to do, and that's okay. And I said I wanted to complete two baby projects. I've almost completed one, so that's not bad. Uh, all three of those I'm going to continue on for the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm not setting myself any new new goals this time because I need to get all of these, I need to make progress with all of these basically and I have got other projects on the go as well um, so I just have got enough, <laughs> I've got plenty. Uh, so the other ones I did not complete any of these <laughs> but oh well, uh, try 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 again. Uh, the peace on earth wall hanging which is from a Crowley Society box. Hang on, I'm just going to see if I can dig that out and show you quickly. Hmm. Here we go. So this is from the Crowley Society box 39, which is from a while ago now. In fact, I think it was this time last year. Um, but I only actually started working on it this summer, as uh, Christmas in July, part of Christmas in July. And let me see if I can find the picture. Picture, picture, picture. Yeah, there we go. So it was originally designed as, there we go, as bunting. But I don't really go in for bunting very much. It's pretty. And, you know, if somebody wants me to make bunting for them, great. And actually, having said that, I do put a few bits up around Halloween mostly, and then Christmas, that is bunting-like. Um, but I've decided I'm going to make all the, the little squares, all the letters, and then I'm going to put them together in a kind of grid formation. Um, and then either add tassels to the bottom and a hanging loop on the top, so it's just as a wall hanging, or I'm going to frame it. So... Here are the little letters. That's the P and the E. There's not much contrast on that one. I don't know how well you can see it. E. Da, 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 da. E. A. Hey. I haven't done them all yet. This is why I need to work on it. C. E. earth to do and then join them together however I feel is best and um, finish it off in whichever way I choose. Um, I don't, I'm not going to get that done for Monday I don't think but I'd like to have it done by the Christmas fair in Starbuck on the following Saturday because I think that'd be a good thing to have with, um, you know it is intended for sale, <laughs> not, um, I like the concept and I, I'm enjoying making it. The colours aren't for me, and they don't go with anything we've got. <laughs> uh, so yes, I want to get that finished. And did I mention last time I've promised Lindsay that I'll make a llama for her friend who may have had the baby now. When I spoke to her last, they were due this week, I think. Um, so I'm running a bit behind with that. <laughs> I'd like to get it done sooner rather than later. I don't know these people at all, and, but I just, I love babies. 
and I like making things for them. So, and uh, yeah, when we talked about it the first time, I was drunk. <laughs> and I went, oh, that makes a thing fur. And I've said it now, and I don't go back on things like that. So, I will. Um, and then the last two aren't specifically crochet, but business related goals. I need to update my shop, get all my Christmas bits on there now so people can buy them in time for Christmas and also just update my website a bit. Um, I've actually had an audit done, so for free, uh, through a contact that I met at the uh, Indie Business Club actually and obviously my website is very new still and doesn't have a lot on it but it was still really useful to have that audit done because I now have more of a plan and you know I know what my next steps are going to be in terms of updating it what I need on there and um, yeah it's given me a bit of a direction a bit more purpose with it which is great um, right that is almost it I am just going to do a little update on my physical health and weight loss progress Obviously some of you won't want to hear about that and that's absolutely fine. So for those of you who have made it this far but don't want to stay on, thank you very very much for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Um, I've not really said have I how much I appreciate it. If you are watching this, it's it's great. Just the fact that anyone would want to watch me blather on. <laughs> about what I've been up to for an hour or more is amazing. Um, so yeah, I hope it's been okay. I know I've been a bit all over the place today. I'll try and be a bit better next time. Well, I say that every time, don't I? And it's always a bit mad. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. You know what to do if you have. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day whenever you're watching this. Um, please let me know what you're up to especially if you're making anything I'd love I know I've got loads of projects on the go but I'm always up for some inspiration uh, so yeah thank you and goodbye right if you have stayed thank you again <laughs> um, I will keep this brief there's not a huge amount to say um, the main point is that I have lost another pound which is fantastic it was even better than that um, the Saturday after I last spoke to you, I had a bit of a shock when I stood on the scales because I'd actually lost three pounds that week. I don't know how. <laughs> I hadn't done anything special. Um, since then, I have put two back on, which is a bit of a disappointment, but I'm staying positive about it because it's still a loss overall, you know, over those two weeks, which is what I'm aiming for. I'm still going in the right direction. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, if I can get those off again, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, but you know, I know from past experience, slow and steady is best, really. Um, and hey, I had a good week <laughs> when I saw that on the scales. That was, uh, it was a good start to that day. Um, so yeah, that's where I am overall. I have lost another pound. I am struggling again a bit at the moment um, with being a bit run down. I think I've got a bit of PMS going on <laughs> um, this week and just the fact that it's the run up to Christmas and so there is even more chocolate and sweets and other snacky, tempting, unhealthy things in all of the shops and mentioned on TV and the internet and everywhere else. And it's very easy to get into the, oh well it's nearly Christmas, mindset. I'm trying not to. I did quite well last year actually at that and I think I'm doing okay so far. Um, it is, it is a struggle and you know, but I'm just taking it one day at a time and I am letting myself have nice things. I've had mince pies a couple of times. I've had some novelty Christmas chocolate a couple of times. Um, because you've got to enjoy life, haven't you? You've got to. But I'm just trying to keep it under control. <laughs> Try not to go mad and 
binge every day because I'll just regret it later if I do. Um, so yeah, I think I'm doing okay. I am struggling. I don't know how this week's going to go overall. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I've not done a lot of exercise. I did a bit yesterday. I walked back from school after getting Ned there after his hospital appointment on Monday, so that's good. Cause that's a good um, like 40 minute walk. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I've, I've trailed off a bit there, haven't I? I don't really know where I'm going with this anymore. Um, but yeah, one day at a time. And I think just trying to accept that this is a difficult time of year and that if between now and New Year, obviously I don't want to put any weight on, but if I end up at the end of December being the same weight as I am now, that's okay because it is really tricky and you know, I, I would count that as a win. And, and obviously, you know, like I said before, that yes, I do want to lose weight. Medically speaking, I need to lose weight. <laughs> um, but I am trying to just generally be a bit healthier. So actually eat fruit and veg. <laughs> actually move a bit. And I am doing that. So overall, I'm doing okay. If you are on a similar journey, let me know how you're doing. Um, if you want to know, I don't know, my opinion on anything, don't know why you would, but <laughs> um, if you do, I'm more than happy to chat about you know, how you're doing things, how you feel about things. Do you know, drop a comment, drop me an email, whatever you want to do. Um, and yeah, try and just take it one day at a time. Okay, that is it. Thank you again for watching, especially if you have watched this bit. Uh, and I will wrap this up and leave you to get on with your day. So until next time, thanks again and bye bye.